What's up guys, Garrett here. How many of you would like to have free hot water during all of your summer months? One, two, three, all of you, yes. Me too. Well, if you made the really good decision to install a ground source heat pump, just like I did, you can have that. This is part six and the final video in my DIY geothermal series. If you missed parts one through five, there are links down in the description. Feel free to get caught up on all of those. Free hot water sounds too good to be true, and I'm not talking about putting solar panels on top of your roof and risking uh, the weight and the leaks and all of that kind of stuff. I, those are great systems, but it's just not for me. If you have a ground source heat pump, there's a neat option called a D superheater that you can buy with your system. And if your heat pump is located near your hot water tank, you can plumb the two of those together, use that D superheater and get free hot water anytime that your system is in cooling mode. The reason the desuperheater works in cooling mode is because that heat pump extracts heat from your house and deposits it in the earth using that geothermal system. Well, what if you could take some of that heat and put it into your hot water heater? That's exactly what the desuperheater does. Here's the inside of this unit. And if you ever wondered what a desuperheater actually looks like, I'm gonna show you. So as you can see, Right here, that is my water in. So the water from the hot water tank goes in there. And that is this line right here. It goes this way and then joins up with this thing. This thing right here, if you can see this line, that is actually a refrigerant line. So that joins into this uh, expanded area right here. And that is where the refrigerant goes. It surrounds that water pipe inside to transfer that heat to that water. So then it just goes around, comes this way, curls around, goes above the compressor, which is right here. And then as you can see, goes down this way, curls back around, and then ties into a pump, which is right here. And then from that pump, it actually goes out the other side of the unit. And if you wondered what kind of pump that is, well, I took mine apart just so that you could see what it is. It's a little taco pump, a 1 40th horsepower, I believe. And the nice thing about those little taco pumps is they're very, very simple. They have these little cartridges that fit inside of them. So if your cartridge ever goes bad, the bearing seize up, whatever, you can replace these. These are readily available. I ended up having to replace mine because I somehow accidentally hit this little switch right here, and that switch activates the uh, desuperheater for this. That means then that the pump will actually come on. Well, you don't want that pump to come on if there's no water in the system. Therefore, it's just running dry if it's in the on position. Well, that burn up this little guy right here. So I got to change one out. It was about 90 bucks, at least at the time that I did it whenever I change it out, but it's way better than having to change out an entire pump, which is about $300. So it's not that terribly bad. If you are doing a retrofit system where you already have your geothermal unit, but is not yet hooked up into your water heater, first things first, disconnect that water heater, turn off the power to it, and then drain it out into the nearest drain. That's where you have to start. This is my Bosch ground source heat pump. And as you can see down here, there's a little hole right there and a little hole right there. This has a D superheater built into it, meaning that the pump and everything is all built in. All I have to do is connect from those two holes over to my water heater right over there. It's not a difficult thing to do. Here's everything that I need to do mine. So I have to put a T in with a little extension right there into the bottom of that water heater. And that'll allow me to, like I said, T in to where the, uh, the hot side goes from the D superheater. And then the other side goes to that factory drain valve at the bottom of the water heater, just right there. That's where I drain the water heater. The rest of it, uh, you know, shut off valves, one on the hot, one on the cold, and then just various fittings needed to uh, tie into everything. These two fittings are just half inch 
pipe thread fittings that go to PEX, and those just tie into my geothermal unit. Some elbows, tees, of course, crimp rings. You're gonna need your PEX cutter, PEX crimper, uh, an assortment of wrenches. Of course, your PEX line. I've got red and blue, just so I can keep them separate. And then, you want to insulate those pipes as well. This is the PEX that I'm using. It is half inch, just regular PEX. Of course, I use the copper crimp rings because that's what I have, but the half inch is plenty adequate on the size. So the first thing we're gonna show you is the cold side of this. Now this is an air valve that came with my hot water tank, but most of you won't have that. You'll have a little standpipe extension just like this. Inside of that is a little rubber valve that uh, kind of opens and closes, and it's intended to have the direction of the water go down just like that. So it's supposed to just go down that way. Therefore, you do not want to connect this above this. Therefore, this needs to be below it. So remember that the direction of the flow is going to be coming out of the tank and then over into that pipe right there. Well, if you connect this over here, that's gonna go against the direction of that little valve that's in here. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a bunch of uh, heat bleed through going through your line, your cold line, and it, your cold is not gonna be cold. It's gonna actually be pretty darn warm. So you wanna keep this connection on the correct side of that nipple right there. To do this is really easy. It's just a two inch long, uh, threaded brass extension with the the T right on top of it. So that's three quarter inch there, three quarter inch this way, and three quarter inch this way. Then I tied in a little bit of copper here with a three quarter inch adapter, which goes down to a shutoff valve right over there and then over to the unit. On the bottom of your tank, go ahead and remove that drain valve. Next, you're going to take the the threaded nipple here, as well as the T. Put those together to start with, and then thread it in right there. Get it nice and tight, and then the orientation that you want. Once this is tight and in the correct orientation, go ahead and put your drain valve back in right into the end here. With your drain valve on, go ahead and screw on your PEX adapter. Don't forget all of that thread tape. You definitely wanna have really good sealed joints all the way throughout this. Now we've got everything hooked up. That's the hot side, that's the cold side. You can see the lines going down. I've got the shutoff valve for the hot side right there. And of course the shutoff valve for the cold side right over here. It's just where I could fit them in. Uh, down here, I didn't really have a lot of room to work with and I wanted it to be accessible. So just play with your positioning of everything. But with that said, it's time to pressure everything up. So crack all your valves open, get all the air out of the system. And the best way to do that is just open the hot side of one of your sinks to let all of that air out of the system. Check everywhere for leaks. So every single joint that you had apart, check them all for leaks over here, of course down there, and then at your unit over here. If everything leak checks, power everything up at that point. Open all of your valves, power it up, you want to stick this switch on if you have one of these Bosch's and everything should work at that point. Congrats, you've got everything set up at this point. Now just to benefit from all of that free hot water. But before you do that, don't forget to adjust the thermostats on your hot water tank. If your thermostats are too high, uh, your, your pump for your desuperheater is not going to come on. So mine comes on if the incoming water temperature is below 120 degrees. Therefore, my hot water tank has to be set below that 120 degrees. I've got it set around 112 to 115, something like that. The incoming and outgoing uh, temperatures of the water that's going through that desuperheater is supposed to be anywhere from five to 15 degree differential between the two. So again, you can kind of play with the, uh, the, the settings within your water heater. But the instructions that come with your heat pump 
will tell you what to do, especially if you have just one element heater or if you have a two element heater. The procedures are a little bit different for both. Don't forget that these superheater is really only effective during the cooling mode. You don't want to use it during the heating modes. Therefore, you're going to have to reset the thermostats within your hot water heater during those times. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit that like button down below as well as subscribe. I'll see you next time.